Hello everybody and welcome to your next tutorial on on creating a platform using XNA. So last tutorial we ended off by creating our our single dimension list. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to want to check to see whether it is an attribute that we're loading right now or if it is uh if it is contents that we're loading right now. So we're gonna say that if uh, line dot contains and we're gonna say load equals okay so if it contains that value then uh, we're then we know that we're loading in an attribute okay so uh, up here we we set it we created a new initialization for them but we really shouldn't we're gonna declare when we need to so we're gonna say that temp attributes is equal to new list right there and we're going to say that line dot remove and we'll say zero line dot index of equals plus one so we're going to remove the load equals and we're going to say uh, load type well we should make a type so if we scroll up load type type so we'll say type is equal to load type dot attributes attributes okay so we're gonna say else we'll say type is equal to load type uh, dot contents and we'll just say temp contents is equal to new list okay so uh, what what we're gonna do now is that we're going to if you notice in here, we separate them by uh, opening and closing square brackets, right? Whether you want to use those or a different symbol, it's up to you, right? But I use opening and closing square brackets. So what we need to do, we know we know that we're separating them by each um, by each of the closing brackets. So that's what we have to do. We have to split them in order to s to separate them, so then we can um, add them to the attributes of course so what we're going to do is we're going to have a, a line array i guess and we're going to make it equal to line dot splits and we're going to split these right here so we're going to have an array of those split lines <coughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to use a for each statement so we're going to say for each string uh li and line array uh and we're gonna say that we're gonna create a new line new line and that new line is equal to line dot trim and we're gonna trim uh, anything we need to trim so this uh, spaces and just in case we're gonna trim that so we're gonna trim everything and we're gonna say that if new line not equals to string dot empty uh, then we have to check uh, what attribute it is so we're gonna say that if type is equal to load type dot contents and then we're gonna say uh, temp contents dot add and we're going to add in the new line and we'll say else temp attributes dot add the new line okay so after that for each statement then we're going we're going to want to say that if the uh, type is equal to load type dot contents sorry contents and temp contents dot count is greater than zero because uh, very well there could be an empty space and therefore um, nothing will be added to temp content so we don't want to add an empty line right so we're gonna say that if it's uh, equal to zero then we're gonna say that contents dot add temp contents and we'll say attributes dot add temp attributes so what do we do right now so we even if the type is equal to attributes we never we never add any we never add anything to the default attributes we only add it to it if there's a type con if, if we're loading in contents so what does this mean okay so if we go right here okay so say I'm look I'm loading in images right here so we're loading in here okay and say we're loading in three images so splash image two and splash image three okay 
so we're loading oh okay so we're loading in three different images so um, our attribute is image so it knows that we're loading in um, images okay so once we load an attribute it adds that to temp attribute right so it doesn't delete it or anything it just adds it to temp attribute so it's still stored in there once we load in a content then it knows that uh, this attribute is equal so when, when we say when we when we say that when we're loading in the content then we add it to our attributes in our content it's letting us know that this attribute is equal to image and the content is equal to this, um, this whatever we put in there right so that is why we only do whenever we load a content right so then therefore we know that the corresponding content is equal uh, the corresponding attribute tribute is equal to this corresponding content and I hope that didn't really confuse you if it does then uh, just keep on looking over the code and it should make sense to you uh, so for the overload uh, might as well just uh, just finish this overload method so this overload method is gonna work um, they have an identifier and if it identifies the end load identifier then it ends uh, loading and when it um, recognizes the start identifier then it starts loading uh, so this one is a is a slight modification of the the first one. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna have a boolean variable and we're gonna call it identifier. So the identifier found and we'll set that equal to false. Okay. So right now we're we're going to copy all of this. So we're gonna copy this uh, this method right here. And we're gonna post in there because we're loading in the same mechanism. The loading mechani mechanism is the same. It's just uh, some things are different. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're 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 gonna do something above this. So what we're gonna say right here is we're gonna say that if identifier found, so if it's equal to true. Uh, then we we load it in because if we don't find that identifier then we don't want to load in anything so uh, so yeah um I believe I put that in the right place did I yeah okay so if identifier found then we don't do the loading in so what we're gonna say we're gonna say that if line dot contains and do it in this order and load and load equals and the reason why I put the equal sign is that because you might w have something that is in a directory load or something and therefore you might run into problems but if this is equal if this is true then we said identifier found equal to false and we do break so we exit the while loop and we then we say else if line dot contains load equals line dot contains load equals and it's what I forgot to do and it should say and a line dot contains identifier right because it could we could very well see that but it has to incorporate the identifier so and line dot contains identifier uh, then what we're gonna do, we're gonna say identifier found is equal to true, and we're just gonna say continue. So if you're wondering why I put continue in there, you might be saying, wait, if we said identifier found and it says load equals, why not uh, just continue with the program because it's the attribute? No, when we have our identifier, our identifier is not going to be a, an attribute. It's just going to let us know that we're doing something. Now, if you want the identifier to be like an attribute, then you can always remove the continue. It's up to you. But most likely, for example, uh, if I open this, say I'm, I'm loading a menu, right? So say we have our, our menu file. When I say load equals, I might say title menu, right? So that is our identifier identifier and we say end load load equals title menu so we sorry so we know that that is um, our identifier and then therefore then we do load equals we do the attributes and all that stuff right so if you if you want to have different names for the identifier like you know like we don't want to get it confused like you can say like um, 
load identity or whatever right and then you can say end identity it's up to you whichever one you want to do it but it's, it's really ultimately up to you and uh, the reason why we have to say uh, check for end load before load is because load is within this word end load over here right so therefore uh, if we check it vice versa then even if the lines end load uh, it's still gonna uh, contain it's still gonna load still exists in the word and load so therefore I think this line is true and therefore it'll run it like the first um like the first way we had it so anyways that is it for this tutorial I hope you enjoyed it and we will see this in action the next next tutorial once we actually create our real splash screen so I hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching and bye